All throughout history, gods and deities have been worshipped and written about by nearly every major culture on the planet with striking similarities. With so much misinformation and suppression behind connecting the ancient past, much of this information leading back to the truth has been nearly lost to time and considered nothing more than a myth to most of society. The most important fact to understand when connecting and deciphering the events of the past correctly is that history has been written by the victors and often does not accurately reflect the events that really occurred. This shocking realization means that much of what we've been told regarding the ancient past and what we think is just a myth is not based on facts and is heavily biased and controlled. This control of historical events has polluted our understanding of who these gods really are and how they were all connected in shaping our collective reality. Earth is merely one of the billions of other habitable planets in our Milky Way galaxy alone that would outnumber every grain of sand on all the beaches of Earth. The greatest challenge we face is through systemic ignorance and a lack of awareness of everything that exists around us. This manufactured perception blinds us from asking the important questions about our origins and how ancient civilizations of the past possess such vast knowledge and sophistication. So who really were these gods of ancient history? And what evidence is there that proves that they are real and more than just a myth? To find out the truth, we have to go back to the beginning, to the unaltered and unpolluted view of our ancient history. Following this breadcrumb trail leads us back to ancient Iraq, to one of the first developed human civilizations on Earth, known as the Sumerians. The Sumerians represent the first civilization to develop advanced writing techniques, as well as tracking events and chronicling our ancient history. The Sumerians claimed that their knowledge of the stars, writing, agriculture, and social structures were all lowered from heaven by great gods who came from a planet with a long elliptical orbit. The Sumerians left behind records indicating the existence of this planet in cuneiform writings and cylinder seals. The most famous of these is known as VA-243, which shows a scale model of our solar system, which includes our central sun and the planets that revolve around it, including Planet X, where they claim their gods came from. Today, most of society has been tricked into believing these gods in Planet X are nothing more than a myth and fairy tale to hide the truth with laughter and ridicule. This clever tactic has hidden the real version of history and our origins for generations until over time has been nearly lost forever. It's time for humanity to awaken from its amnesia of all of this happened before us. The Sumerians called their gods the Anunnaki, which meant those who from heaven to earth came. The Sumerians wrote in detail about both who the Anunnaki were and the events that led to their arrival on earth hundreds of thousands of years ago from Planet X. In these early cuneiform writings, such as the Atrahasis, we learn about two brothers known as Enki and Enlil who bitterly fight over the direction of humanity and provides details of the disasters caused by the crossing of Planet X. Much of the turmoil revolves around these two rival families and how this mysterious planet has shaped our story. Enki was a brilliant scientist and was known as the great magician and geneticist of the Anunnaki family. His symbol was represented as a dragon and serpent and was shown through the modern medical caduceus symbol. The name En means Lord with Ki being the original name of our planet before it was called Earth, which was later renamed for this great being Ea, a previous name of Enki. Enki's half-brother Enlil, known as the Lord of the Air or Sky, and represented by the Eagle and Bull, was a polar opposite of his brother. His values revolved around a military and highly disciplined mentality, whose interests solely lie in the preservation and future of the Empire of Anu. All of the Anunnaki are named after this king of the gods who believes that he rules over Earth. The oldest and most important of these Sumerian writings is known as the Enuma Elish, which is a cuneiform tablet that speaks about our origin story and the devastation in our solar system long ago in the past. Found in 1849 in what is now the area of Mosul, Iraq, the Enuma Elish may be one of the most important pieces of writing in human history for the unaltered and extensive information given for the events of the ancient past. The Enuma Elish contains seven tablets, with the first five describing the turbulent celestial events that happened long ago when these Anunnaki royal gods 
acted out roles as the planets of our solar system, like a grand play, with Marduk being represented as the planet X, known to the Sumerians as Nibiru, with Enlil represented as Jupiter. Reading from an excerpt from Tablet 6 of the Enuma Elish, it states, They bound him, holding him before Enki. They inflicted the penalty on him and severed his blood vessels. From his blood, he, Enki, created mankind, on whom he imposed the service of the gods and set the gods free. After the wise Enki had created mankind and had imposed the service of the gods upon them, the task is beyond comprehension. The gods were then divided, all of the Anunnaki into upper and lower groups. He assigned 300 in the heavens to guard the decrees of Anu and appointed them as guard. Enlil has always hated humanity and called them the beasts, referencing their primitive nature and compared to their DNA. These brothers were given ownership and responsibility over planet Earth and deemed themselves gods of everything beneath them. Most of our story and the extensive conflict throughout humanity all stems from the jealousy that arose between Enlil and his sons over the gifts within the human genome that were instilled secretly by using Enki's own DNA himself. We learned in the Enuma Elish in Atrahasis that the Anunnaki created humanity to ease the workload of the Ajiji, the workforce of the royal family, and to jumpstart the genetics of the Neanderthal with their own DNA to toil in the Absu, which we know is South Africa. Today, thousands if not millions of ancient mining sites dating to over 100,000 years old, utilizing advanced smelting techniques, have been found all over the region. This is the ancient reason why we still value gold nearly above all else, and is part of our long history of slavery on the planet. We are now just waking up to the truth of all of this. The original purpose behind the creation of Homo sapiens, through the eyes of Enlil, was to become a simple slave race, with only enough intelligence to comprehend basic orders. Even the idea of giving humans more intelligence through splicing their own Anunnaki DNA greatly angered Enlil and he fiercely opposed it. Unbeknownst to Enlil, his half-brother Enki ended up secretly designing a model of Homo sapien that was far too intelligent and possessed large amounts of Anunnaki DNA that could even rival their greatness as a species. Enki felt great responsibility and compassion for his creation and endowed Homo sapiens with an advanced brain and higher consciousness with shock centers of energy that could be manipulated from a distance in the future in case humanity became enslaved by ideas. When Enlil found out that Enki had given Homo sapiens the gifts of their intelligence and the right to free will through conscious expansion, he was furious and promised to enslave humanity forever and never allow them to know the truth of who they really are. Much of the current reality stems from the promise that has always been kept and is the purpose behind the inversion of so many meanings that lead back to the truth, such as the demonization of the snake, Enki symbol. This realization of reality can be uncomfortable to accept, but necessary for growth and perspective. When Enlil was chosen to be the ruler of Earth, instead of his half-brother Enki, a promise that had been made for the ultimate slavery of humanity was orchestrated and carried out 12,800 years ago as the planet a crossing Planet X approached Perihelion and disaster occurred across the Earth, as told by Atrahasis, who was also known as Noah. This represented the great reset button of humanity, and just the calamity needed by Enlil to permanently enslave humanity by tricking them through the conditioning of certain ideas and laws, so that society would unknowingly give all of their energy away to these gods. The popular figure of the cross, represented by Planet X, meaning the crossing or the sacrifice on the crossing through Marduk's later trickery, was implemented into religion to become a massive control system of information and controlling the minds of all of society. A profound quote to explain this deception and control by Enlil, Ninurta, and Marduk on humanity comes from Barbara Marciniak, which states, The ultimate tyranny in a society is not controlled by martial law, but controlled by the psychological manipulation of consciousness, through which reality is defined so that those who exist within it do not even realize they are in prison. Reality as we know it will change forever once intelligent life is finally announced to the public. All of the silly distractions and ignorance that has plagued our world will melt away with astonishment and wonder once major discoveries in archaeology are revealed that lie under the Great Pyramid of Giza and the Sphinx, known as the Halls of Amente. 
The Anunnaki gods follow the ancient rules laid down for the balancing of energy during zodiacal cycles. The time of Pisces featured a negative polarity, which is why we saw war dominate the planet for thousands of years. All of these changes represent the great metamorphosis of our time as we enter the positive polarity of Aquarius in the next several years to take the first step on our journey into the cosmos to join our galactic neighbors. What kind of society will we become? One focused on war and material gained by the eagle? Or higher consciousness in the lost teachings of the great dragon Enki?